Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. Today, we got ourselves a special episode. Not because it's my birthday, which I'm very excited about, but who is Tech? So there we got ourselves a special episode because I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do Barcode 3D. So let's start off with what exactly Barcode 3D is. Well, in its basic sense, it's really just lines going throughout the 3D of your graffiti and that's it. Now you might hear me say this and think, alright, well if it's so simple, if it's so easy, then why do we need a tutorial for it? And that brings us to the next section of the video. What problems do people have with it? The issue a lot of people run into when they're adding lines throughout their 3D is they run into tangents. Now a tangent is essentially the relationship between two lines or two subject matters within a single image. And there is a bunch of different tangents out there. When you start running into tangents, they begin to negatively affect your image. They either make things look a little bit more clustered and confusing, or they make things look flatter. Now, as you might imagine, since we're adding 3D to our images, the whole point behind 3D is to add depth. And we don't want tangents because tangents make things flatter, which completely contradicts our depth. So our job is going to be to add these lines without taking away depth. So we'll begin by looking at our 3D without anything added into it, without any interior details. And what we'll find is a couple of vertices as well as receding lines. Now these two points are really important because the vertex right here, that's showing us a directional shift in our forms. It's saying, hey look, our form is going this way and then it changes to a different direction. Now the receding line here depicts depth. It's showing us how far down our 3D is going, how far down the form of our letter structure actually reaches. And that is a key factor to keep in mind. If we start adding in our interior details and our line from our interior detail either covers, obscures, or creates a tangent with this vertex and this receding line, then suddenly our image looks flatter. The addition of this line has potentially confused the information that those two lines were previously showing us. But the key thing to remember is your your lines should be consistent. But this goes a step further. If you're trying to add lines within your 3D and your 3D is either A, not properly done, then you're going to run into issues, or B, if you have a vanishing point and your barcode 3D does not follow that vanishing point as well, then you're going to run into issues. As now, your barcode 3D kind of obscures the perspective. It hides the perspective's actual true vanishing point, and we don't want to do this. The whole point behind a vanishing point is to add even more depth. Your Vanishing point needs to always be very, very definitive, very accurate. If it's not, if you've messed up your interior details in this way, then suddenly your receding lines also look to be an interior detail rather than a line with some structure to it, some meaning to it, some fundamentals to it, as opposed to just a detail. Going back a little bit though, if you're having the issue of your 3D not being properly done to begin with, well then you need to learn how to walk before you can run. That's a very basic issue and that's going to have to be something you fix before you worry about interior details and anything of the sort. So do keep that in mind. But there's a different issue that plagues this kind of interior detail. And that's the image weight. You see, something a lot of people don't think about is the actual weight that their details carry. So let's take our letters. Let's just imagine we have our letters here and our letter has X amount of weight. The weight of our letter is more than anything else in the image. We add some 3D there and still the letter weighs more than anything else. Well, then we start adding our barcode 3D and we add a lot of it. Once you begin adding these lines to your 3D, we have to consider how many lines are we adding because the more we add, the more image weight that detail is beginning to carry. If you want a tutorial on image weight and how it affects graffiti, watch the video up at the top here. It goes over all the different factors for image weight and how that applies to graffiti. It's a really good watch and it'll set you up nicely for this next part we're about to talk about. The more of these lines you begin to add, the more image weight it begins to carry. And the more it begins to pull away from other elements in your image. On top of that, oftentimes graffiti artists like to use the color black for these lines. And black is extremely heavy. It carries a lot of image weight. So when you add the fact that you're not only in increasing the amount of detail, you're increasing its positive space, but you're also adding this harsh black to it, well suddenly this detail carries more weight than your actual letters, and it becomes more of a distraction as a result of that. Now let's say maybe you've fallen victim to some of the previous mistakes we recently talked about, maybe your 3D isn't accurate, maybe your vanishing point is off, maybe your interior details aren't receding to the vanishing point as well, or maybe you have tangents, well all of those are also going to add additional weight, and if before the mistakes, 
your interior detail was already weighing more than your letters, well then after the mistakes you can be sure it's really going to outweigh your letters. So while yes, drawing lines and calling it barcode 3D is extremely simple, making sure you don't run into tangents and other fundamental flaws can be pretty difficult. As long as you keep these things in mind you should be perfectly fine. And also, today's brushes that we used in the video were from my new brush pack I released. That's right, I made some brushes, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of excited to make them, it was a lot of fun to figure out. And I feel like I've done a pretty good job simulating that like spray paint flaring effect. We came out with two different packs, each pack comes with 12 different brushes, three stamps, three paintable surfaces, and five color palettes for anybody who struggles with color schemes for their graffiti. And then we took both of these packs and bundled them together, that way you can get both in one for five dollars less. But dudes, if you want to learn more about graffiti, if you want some more tutorials, look at the best how to do graffiti playlist right up here. The image weight video is also on this playlist if you want to go ahead and check that out. And down here we have more graffiti videos for you. But I'm gonna get on out of here, enjoy my birthday and party, and by party I mean spend time with family because I'm an old man now. But <laughs> I'll catch you guys back here next week. Thanks for watching.